Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luke and in today's video I want to show you something that a lot of people might have missed uh, with one of our releases. So here as you can see, uh, back in April of this year we released 2.1.8 and we actually introduced the Morph SVG plugin which is actually for Club GSAP members only but we've uh, integrated it with Motion Page and I just wanted to show you an example of how we can use Morph SVG in today's video. So here's GSAP's very own website talking about the Morph SVG plugin and feature. Uh, it tells you how you can get started with it, but since we've implemented it to Motion Page, we don't actually need to register the plugin. An example of Morph SVG is right here, as you can see. So this SVG is morphing from a circle to a hippo. And the way this works basically is it reads the uh, path data in the SVGs and it's going to morph those path coordinates into one another. In this example, Morph SVG plugin finds the path with the ID of circle and the path with ID of hippo and then it automatically figures out how to add enough points to the circle to get a super smooth morph. So here is a really basic example, GSAP2. Uh, the first ID here, this is what we're going to target, uh, how we normally would target an element in motion page. And then we're going to use the custom code box to basically add just this. So here we'll have our original element and then we'll use the custom code box to morph into our target path. Now it might sound confusing, but when I open motion page, you'll see how this is done. And it's actually very simple. So what I'm going to do is, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to steal this SVG code which is being used on the GSAP website and I'm going to use Bricks Builder to do this example today. Alright, so let's go to the HTML and I'm just going to copy and paste all of this here. I'm actually just going to copy up to the SVG because I don't need this button here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it into a code block in Bricks Builder. So what I've done already is I've just added two sections to this page and each section's container has a height of 100 viewport height just so we have some room to scroll. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a third section in the middle. Put this to the middle like so and then in this container I'm going to do our code block. And then in here, just do content. And all I'm going to do is paste the code from GSAP's website. And as you can see, we have this huge hippo here. Now, I will also need to copy some CSS. Now, I don't need the play because this is related to the play button. So I'm just going to copy and paste everything else here, except for body. So SVG and the hippo. So let's just go to the top and we'll add some styles. So when I paste the CSS, what's going to happen is the hippopotamus is going to be hidden because hippo has a visibility of hidden. So from the start, we don't want to see it. We only want to see the first SVG and the first SVG is going to be the circle here. And as you can see, it has an ID of circle, this path, and then this path has an ID of hippo. Now, the way this is working is we have an SVG tag here. It's closing here and then inside that we have the two paths, the first path is going to be our first SVG, which is the circle. And the second path in this case is going to be the hippo, which we want to morph into. So it's important that these have IDs or classes. All right, so I'm just going to save this here. And now I'm going to open up motion page. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new timeline here. And then I'm going to call this morph SVG. And then let's target our morph SVG page, which I've just created with the hippo. So this is what we have, as you can see. So remember what we need to target first, and I will use page load just for demonstration purposes. First, I'll need to target the first path. And the first path has an ID of circle. I'm going to type circle here, press enter. And as you can see, it's being highlighted, which is good. And now we want to edit on two because we want to morph this on two. And what I'm going to do is come down here to custom, click this box to add GSAP. And then in here, we can add the custom code. So if we go back to the documentation here, all we'll need is this text here. So I'm going to copy this morph SVG colon, 
and then we target our ID in quotation marks. So back in motion page, I'm just gonna hit paste. And now if I play this timeline, you can see it's morphing into our second path, which has the ID of hippo. So pretty simple. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just show you a second example using some custom SVGs. So I'm just gonna delete all of this SVG stuff here. I'm gonna keep this the same and I'm just gonna comment this out for now. All right, so what I wanna try here is I wanna get an SVG of a thumbs up and then I wanna morph that into an SVG of a thumbs down. So since I'm a member on flaticon.com, I'm just gonna go grab some uh, SVG code and paste it in here. All right, so I've just found an SVG for a thumbs down and this is what it looks like. But first of all, I want it to go from a thumbs up. So I'm also gonna find a thumbs up icon, which is very similar and we'll paste it above here. All right, so I've just found a similar SVG of a thumbs up and I'm gonna paste it above here. So as you can see, we have two SVGs, a thumbs up and a thumbs down. All right, so remember, we only need the SVG once. So I'm gonna open it here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this one. I'm also gonna delete all of this. And I'm not super concerned with everything else. The only thing which is the most important to us right now is the paths. Now what I'm gonna do just to make my life easier is I'm gonna give these paths um, a class. So this time let's use a class instead of an ID. So the first path is gonna be class equals, and I'm gonna do thumb one. One. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is I know thumb one is gonna be our thumbs up and then the extra one is because this thumbs up has actually two paths, it's made of two paths. So what I'm gonna do is go to the second path here and also give this a class of thumb one and then two. Now this one is the stat of our thumbs down. So let's do path class thumb two, which is gonna be our thumbs down. And then this is the first path. And then the second path, thumb two, two. So then what I can do is come back up to our CSS and uncomment this. And this time we wanna hide the thumbs down. And remember it's made up of two paths. Uh, the first one was thumb two, one, and then also thumb two, two. So now we're just left with this one. So I've also just added this as well. So basically the uh, paths, all paths have a fill of white. Now, just so we can see it clearly. And then this SVG here, the width, I'm just gonna change this to make it a little bit smaller. So let's just do 300 pixels. All right, so that looks good to me. Everything should be set up. We've given the paths a class each, and that's all we need uh, to animate in motion page. So I'm just gonna save this page here. Now let's go back to motion page. We'll give this a refresh. And now as you can see, we have our thumbs up. So now let's just edit this one because we are not doing circle anymore. We are now going to do class of thumb one, one. And then I wanna animate this to the thumbs down version, which is gonna be thumb two, one. So if I just play this, as you can see, we get this effect going on you can see the right part is morphing into the first part of the thumbs down. Now if I duplicate this, and this one will target this time thumb one, two, hit enter, and then we'll just edit this to say two, two. And now as you can see, we are getting this nice morphing effect with SVGs. So of course you could apply this to scroll trigger as well. So if I just change from page load to scroll trigger, now as I scroll down, you can see that's taking place. If I lock it to the scroll bar, you can see now we get this nice effect as we scroll down. So it starts from the top on the green line and then it's gonna completely finish when it hits the uh, red line there. 
and the settings currently is uh, it's going to end when the bottom of this element reaches this red line. So you can see it's still animating here until the very bottom reaches it, it's going to finish. Now we could always change that to the top so it finishes a little bit earlier. So round about here it's going to fully finish. Another thing to note is the ease. You can control it from here. So if we set none, it's going to be much more linear. And then the delay is a little bit too much for me. I prefer something like 0 0.2. So it just feels a little bit snappier as you scroll down. But everyone's different. I mean, um, a long delay is sometimes quite nice. As you can see, when I stop scrolling, it's still animating slightly due to the delay. But whatever you fancy, that's uh, completely your choice. I'm going to save timeline, just check it real quick on the front end. So I'm going to scroll down here, you can see that's taking place. Getting this nice morphing effect. Now I'm going to bring the lines a little bit closer together. So here we'll do 65 and maybe something like 35. Here I'll do 0 0.5. And the ease, I'm going to put back to default. We'll save timeline here, give this a refresh, scroll down. So it's going to all happen more in the middle of the page. So there you have it guys. I hope you like this tutorial. I just wanted to bring this to your attention that we do now have Morph SVG included with Motion Page. And I hope this simple tutorial helps you to get started with morphing your SVGs. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel and please give us a thumbs up on this video. That really helps us out. And I'll be seeing you again in another video very soon. Thank you very much.